Welcome everybody. This is our first um, video for this class, which is a groundwater cycle. Um, I did an overview video last time. Hopefully you guys all uh, saw it. Uh, so today we're getting into the thick of it. So this video might be a little longer than average. I will try to post video that are videos that are less than 10 minutes, uh, but there's quite a bit of content because this is sort of a general video on, you know, the importance of groundwater. Um, and there's a lot to uh, say. Uh, so how important is fresh water? Well, the General Assembly of the UN uh, declares it a uh, human right. Uh, this is a 2011, 2010, excuse me, press release right here, 2010. So you can see that uh, this is fairly recent and a lot of people still live without uh, clean drinking water. Uh, again, uh, out of the UN Development Program uh, and USAID uh, sources, uh, there's basically two um, categories, if you will, of uh, importance of groundwater, so of water in general, fresh water. So water for life, water for livelihoods. So water for life is just delivering clean water, uh, removing wastewater and providing sanitation, right, as basic foundation. So this is what human needs to live, basically. Water for livelihoods is a little bit more advanced. It's like how water is a resource for a productive life or society, right? So it's a little bit, it's a nuance, but it's quite important. So we need water to survive, basically, but we also need water uh, to live. Uh, so that leads to water, and sanita water sanitation and hygiene uh, specialists. Uh, this is one of these water uh, industry uh, jobs um, that are available out there. Uh, and less known, I guess. So they're called wash uh, specialists. So what do they do? Uh, they don't do this, they do this, right? So a lot of uh, wash specialists uh, work in developing countries. So the UN has a lot of them. I have a dear high school friend uh, who is still doing this job based out of uh, Nairobi, uh, Kenya, where the UNICEF has an office there. You can see here, this is the UNICEF uh, right here. So Melia, oops. UNICEF Somalia, uh, the Horn of Africa, and this is just some uh, maps, but basically illustrating that their job is usually in developing countries trying to provide uh, clean and safe water uh, to people. So this is how fresh water is really important. Um, again, the access to clean water, sanitation and hygiene can transform lives, uh, but almost, you know, more than half a billion uh, people live without easy access to clean water. Uh, a lot of people don't have sanitation, uh, and a lot of people on earth still today have to walk long distances to fetch fresh water. So again, fresh water, you cannot survive without fresh water. So whatever work it takes, you do it. And typically in many societies, women and children actually uh, spend a lot of their work day uh, getting fresh water. Now for groundwater, you know, focusing more on groundwater as opposed to fresh water, usually that implies having wells, right? So we need wells to go get the water. Uh, so if there's no you know, surface fresh water anywhere around, a lake or a river, then you have to dig it out of the soil. And this is the object of this course. Uh, so we'll, the second um, course, the second one credit course within that sequence is actually all about wells. So if you're interested more in the technology of wells and wells hydraulics, I invite you to uh, go take that course. Uh, how important is groundwater again? Well, it's important for drinking water, right? So 90% of the rural supply is from groundwater uh, and 33% of the public supply is from groundwater as well. This is in the United States now, uh, not worldwide, right? So even in the United States, you know, some people might not think of this, but a lot of our um, freshwater supply is actually groundwater, right? So again, if you live on a farm and you're not hooked up to a city distribution system, then typically you have a well and that's how you get your uh, fresh water. Now, even a distribution system or uh, uh, utilities, you know, city provided utilities, a lot of them use groundwater. So here at Purdue, uh, we live in West Lafayette. West Lafayette actually gets its water from an aquifer down below a lot of its water. It has well fields, you know, that are pumped to get water to people. Uh, of course, in irrigation, so I just said rural water, so that's for even your house, right? You need a well for your clean drinking water. Uh, but then of course you also use fresh water to um, irrigate the crop. And a lot of the uh, groundwater usage is actually for agriculture 
So agriculture is a huge consumer. And again, we'll have more lectures on exactly how much and how many, but agriculture is a huge uh, consumer of fresh water or groundwater. Uh, and another couple topics that are important for groundwater. So groundwater quality. So, so far I've talked about, you know, what do we, how important is it for people, you know, to survive? And it's really important, obviously, to grow the food that we uh, consume for agriculture. Uh, but there's all other topics, you know, that are important. So uh, I talked about hygiene, you know, at the top for the wash specialists. So hygiene is really important. So at the late 19th century, we didn't have all the sanitation that we do today. Uh, and so th this is a, a, a really important map. So John Snow mapped the cases of cholera in London, 1854. And this is really the, the first indication that groundwater quality is important. So people would use hand crank pumps, basically wells, uh, to get water in the city of London in those days. And those cholera cases, so you can see the, um, these black uh, dots around. So this is a fountain, right? This is where the hand pump was. People were fetching the water from there and by mapping the cases of cholera with those, you know, black boxes where people were getting sick, you know, John Snow sort of backtracked that the uh, uh, source of uh, the infection was actually the water. So a waterborne disease. And this is really uh, the first demonstration of that. Uh, and so groundwater quality, you know, beyond just accessibility is really important. Um, another topic of interest for or of why groundwater is important, again, I've said we use groundwater to grow our food, basically, or grow our crops. Now, when you have a drought, right, groundwater recedes and now it gets harder and harder and harder to extract it from uh, the ground. Uh, so this is a map or an example uh, that was well known in the 2010s of the California drought. And this is a map from uh, 2011 to, so this is 2011 right here. Whoa, sorry, yes, that's the problem with iPads. 2011 to 2015 here, right? Um, and you can see the, the, the growing, basically, uh, drought in California over those years. And of course, there was a lot of news article, a lot of problems linked to that drought. Now, how do we get out of the drought, right? How, do, how is groundwater replenished, if you will? Well, uh, we were waiting for El Nino. So those of you who don't know what El Nino is, this is basically a climate event that has a recurrence of roughly 11 years. And so, you know, once in a while in the news, you will hear, oh, this is a El Nino year or a La Nina year, which is the opposite. But in El Nino years, basically, there's a lot of rain in the uh, southwestern United States. I won't go into the details of why that is, but it's just a large climate event that affects globally. Uh, and you can see here, 2015, 2016, you know, that El Nino event came, right? So all those big spikes with the red, uh, years on top are like large El Nino events, basically, and you can see again that sort of uh, periodicity in there. And so finally in 2015, 2016, so after I showed you those maps, a large El Nino event hit, and you can see now the progression after 2015 to 2017, finally the drought is receding, and by April 2018, you know, we were in basically back to normal conditions. So again, groundwater is really important for life, livelihoods, uh, in you know growing food so our food comes from you know using water to grow it uh, and finally it's also important for uh, uh, hygiene so basically sanitation and waterborne diseases are there so there's a lot of issues there uh, and then um, this last example that i showed you you know the interaction between climate and groundwater is important and the groundwater reserves definitely depend on the global temperature and the global climate uh, okay, so I'll leave it there and I will post a quiz for this lecture. Typically, I will have a quiz after each video, like a self-test, sort of a little activity. Uh, and then, you know, you'll have homework every week. Uh, all right. Thank you very much.